In this video, we're going to introduce a mathematical object, which is going to be really important when we talk about uh, learning and inference in a second, um, but which also crops up in many other fields, uh, such as information theory, uh, statistics, and generally in the field of machine learning. And that quantity is called the kohlblatt leibler divergence. I've written out the mathematical definition of this object uh, at the top of this slide here. Um, but what I want to do is spend some time going through some simple examples about how to compute it and uh, trying to give you some feel for its properties. Great. OK, so um, the KL divergence is defined at the top here. And the way you can think about it is, roughly speaking, a distance measure between two probability distributions. So um, like a distance measure, it's a function of uh, one probability distribution here, P1. Um, distribution is over the variable Z. And a second probability distribution here, P2, over the same variable. And the way that you compute it um, is shown on the right-hand side here. You sum over all possible settings of the variable. Um, so here, this is for a discrete variable. Uh, if it were a continuous variable, this sum would turn into an integral. And z here is just the set of possible uh, values that uh, little z can take. Um, and the quantity you sum over is, well, you take the first probability distribution and you multiply it by log of the ratio of the first probability distribution to the second one. So this seems a bit esoteric at the minute. So let's compute this for um, uh, a couple of simple examples um, and then um, try and figure out, you know, why is this a sensible way of measuring distance between probability distributions? And we'll talk through the properties that it has. Okay, so let's take a really simple example where we have Bernoulli uh, random variables. So P1 and P2 will be distributions over a binary uh, random variable Z and the distributions will be Bernoulli, Bernoulli distributions. So um, what that means is that Z can take uh, values in the cur set curly Z and Z is just, big curly Z is either uh, the variable can take a value of zero or can take a value of one. Um, so let's define P1 of Z equaling zero to be equal to uh, one minus pi and P1 of Z equaling one to be pi. So this is a Bernoulli distribution. And P2 will also be a binary distribution. And it will be will have a different parameter from the first binary distribution. Let's call it its parameter rho. So we get this distribution two. Okay, and now we can plug it into the def these two uh, distributions into the definition of the of the KL divergence. And that's what we'll do below here. So uh, KL. Let's do P1 to P2. So this funny notation is just the uh, sort of notation to indicate that it's got two arguments, the, the divergence, the arguments of two distributions and the vertical um, uh, motif here is meant to indicate that we're gonna compute some kind of divergence between them. So KL P1 to P2, where we have to sum over all the settings of Z. So firstly, let's take the setting of Z where uh, Z is equal to zero. So we get P1 of Z equals to zero. That's this thing. So we'll get one minus pi log. Then we have the ratio one minus pi divided by one minus rho uh, because the probability that Z is zero under the second one is just one minus rho. And then we have the next item in the sum, which is where Z takes the value one. So we have pi log pi over rho. Okay, so that's um, simply how to compute it. Um, we could have also computed it the other way around. So I could have computed 
the KL divergence between P2 and P1. For a distance, this would be the same quantity. Um, let's see what it turns out to be for this divergence measure. So here we'd have P2 as the thing outside of the log. Um, so I'll have one minus rho here, log one minus rho over one minus pi plus uh, rho log rho over pi. And what you can see here, hopefully, is it's not obvious that these two things are going to be the same. These two divergences look a bit different from one another. So whereas a distance, these two things would be equal to one another, this thing would equal this thing. For divergences, we'll show this in a minute, these two things are not going to be equal. So the distance between P1 and P2, or the divergence between P1 and P2, is not equal to the divergence P2 to P1. Okay, this hopefully gives you some flavor about how to compute it. Um, and what we'll now do is talk about some of its properties in more mathematical detail. Okay, and there are really two key properties that I'm gonna talk through. Um, so the first one that we want to look at is, um, when is it, when is this quantity minimized? Okay, so um, for distance measures, you know, the minimal distance between two points occurs when the points live in the same, uh, are identical essentially. So let's just check that's the case here, that when P1 and P2 are equal to one another, the divergence is minimized. Okay, so how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna um, just differentiate it. Okay, so let's, um, let's consider the following case. Um, let's do a little bit more general version of when um, uh, P1 and P2 are Bernoulli distributions, let's consider the case when they're categorical. So P1 of Z and P2 of Z are going to be categorical um, variables, categorical distributions, sorry. Okay, great. So in that case, we can write out the KL divergence um, between P1 and P2 um, to be, um, let's imagine they take values, so Z is going to take values 1 through to big K in our categorical distribution. So then the KL we can write it out is sum over K equals 1 to big K P1 of Z equal to K log P1 z equal to k divided by P2 z equals to k. So you can see that when big K is equal to two, we'll essentially recover the result for the Bernoulli distributions we saw on the previous slide. Good, okay. Um, so in order to find a minimum, we're gonna to need to think about differentiating this object with respect to um, elements in uh, let's, let's differentiate with respect to elements in P1. Um, so we're going to differentiate this uh, with respect to, um, let's pick an element of P1 at random. Let's take the elf element. Okay, so we're going to differentiate this KL with respect to the elf element in P1. You can think of the parameters of P1 as a big vector. And we're just going to differentiate with respect to the, the, the um, elf element of that vector. And so we could just differentiate this side over here as well. Now, we can't carry out this optimization directly because the values in P1 are constrained. We know that if we sum up over uh, K, the elements of the uh, parameters of the categorical distribution, these things have to sum to one. So um, we have to make sure that, well, essentially here we're doing a constrained optimization problem. We can't let the values of a P1 take whatever setting they want. They can't go bigger than one. They can't go smaller than zero and they must sum up to one. So in order to handle this, we're gonna to need to use our machinery for handling um, uh, optimization with constraints. And that in this scenario, we need to use the properties of Lagrange multipliers to handle this. So this is something which is covered in the Mathematics of Machine Learning book. If you want to read more about it, it's also an appendix in uh, Chris Bishop's textbook as well that covers this very nicely. And what that tells us to do is we have to add in a uh, constraint term 
into our objective function that we're optimizing. And the way you do that is you introduce a undetermined uh, Lagrange multiplier, lambda, and you multiply that by the constraint. So here the constraint is that sum over k, p1 z equals to k minus one, this thing is equal to zero. Great. So here's the constraint. Um, we put that into the right hand side of the equation. And um, now we car carry out optimization of this um, extended uh, uh, objective and then substitute in at the end in order to recover the constraint. So let's, let's do the, the optimization here see what happens. Okay, so we're, we're taking derivatives with respect to this quantity in here. And that will pick out the lth term of this sum in here. So when k is equal to l, um, those the term in that sum will depend on the lth element of the parameters. And uh, that will contribute to the to the derivative. And it shows up in two places, the parameters of the categorical distribution. It shows up here, and it shows up in here. And of course, it shows up in the constraint as well. So we're going to have three things, uh, three terms coming out when we do our optimization. Okay, so let's compute the derivatives now. So we'll end up with one term from this first term here, which will just give us log of the ratio of P1 Z equal to L divided by P2 Z equal to L. Um, then we'll get a contribution from this time inside the log here. So I could break the log apart in terms of P1Z equal to L log P1Z equal to L and get rid of this, this bit on the bottom here and forget about that. That already has been handled in this term, the contribution to the derivative. Um, but the, the log P1 bit has not been taken into account of. And so what we'll get is this thing is plus P1 Z equal to L divided by P1 Z equals to L. So when we do take the derivative of the log, we get one over the thing that the log um, had as its argument. And then we get minus lambda here when we differentiate the constraint. Um, and this thing we have to set equal to zero um, to uh, solve the optimization problem. Great, okay, so let's rearrange this to, um, to find that point. Um, this thing, notice, evaluates to one here. So I can, I can break apart the log ratio. We're solving for P1, so P1Z equal to L equals P2Z equals to L, taking that uh, term to the other side, times E to the uh, lambda minus one. Okay, so that's the that's the solution here. Now we put back in the constraint. We're going to put back in our constraint that the sum over L P one Z equals to L is equal to one, and we know that P two has to normalize already. P two is something fixed. It was a valid probability distribution in this derivation. So this thing here, this thing must just evaluate to one for in order for, for P1 to be normalized. Well, P2 is normalized already. Um, so this thing must just uh, evaluate to, to one. So that implies that the optimum occurs when um, P1 Z equals to L is equal to P2 Z equals to L, i.e. the two distributions are exactly the same. Okay, so that was kind of long-winded to show a very sort of fairly simple result that indeed there is an extrema when P1 is equal to P2. Now we need to characterize what this extrema is. Is it a minimum or is it a, a maximum? Before we do that, let's go and consider the case up here where P1 of Z is equal to P2 of Z and just see what the KL evaluates to in that case. So if we were doing that, then we get something like this. Let's just substitute that in P1 of Z log P1 of Z divided by P1 of Z. So this thing will evaluate to one, the log ratio. Log of one is always zero. And so 
the KL will be zero when this is when this happens. So at the optimum or the extrema that we found, uh, the value of the KL is zero. Um, what we'll now show is that this is indeed a minimum. And in fact, the KL divergence um, is uh, in fact always non-negative. So the minimum value it can be is zero. That's what it attains at the minimum. And then everywhere else it takes some positive value. And the way to do that is now to take second derivatives. If we took first derivatives here of the KL divergence, um, now, if we take the second derivative, uh, we inspect that to figure out, you know, in which direction the curvature of the of the, the KL divergence is, and from that we can identify it as a minima. So let's go and do that on this next page. Let's insert a, a page here. So we want to compute uh, d2 KL. I D P one Z equals to L squared. Okay, let's compute the second derivative. We've already done the first derivative of this. We did that over the page. So we can we can plug that result in here. So we take the first derivative, the result of the of the um, the first derivative is is these two terms here in our objective, uh, in our optimization that we just performed. So we can substitute that in already. So this becomes log P1 Z equals to L divided by P2 Z equals to L. And then it was a, the second term is just one here, plus one. This thing, well, the only P1 dependence is in here. So this thing becomes just one over, well, let me just spill out the steps here. This can be D, D, P, one, Z equals to L um, of log P, one, Z equals to L uh, plus one minus log P, two, Z equals to L. Those second two terms don't depend on, the, on P, one, so they'll disappear when we take derivatives and be equal to zero. And then the only term that contributes is this first term, log P1 term. And that when you take derivatives, we know it's just equal to this thing. And P1 is uh, a probability. So it's always going to be um, uh, zero or greater than zero, in which case one over it is always greater uh, than, than zero. So the second derivative here is always greater than greater than zero. And that means that the curvature of the KL looks like this. Um, and we were indeed in a, in a minimum. And at that minimum, we know that the KL takes, this is a function of P1Z equals to L. We know at that minimum, the value takes, the value of the KL is zero. Okay, so putting this all together, um, through this rather long-winded explanation, we've shown by basic differentiation two key properties. The first one is that the KL between two variables, uh, between two distributions, is always greater than or equal to zero, and you only get equality when P1 is equal to P2. So the two distributions are equal. We've used differentiation to show this, that you'll, if you look at places like in David Mackay's book, you see you can also prove this using another piece of machinery that you may not have met before called Jensen's inequality. So I've, I've done this using differentiation because it uses basic tools of calculus, which lots of people have. If you know about Jensen's inequality, then there is a faster route. And, and David Mackay talks about this on page 35 of his textbook. Um, great, so you can see from this that, that the object, the KL divergence, has some of the flavor of a distance measure. It's always uh, non-negative. Distances are also non-negative. You get equality when the arguments are the same, i.e. you're looking at the same distribution, just like a, the distance between two points that's on top of each other is zero. Um, however, it's called a divergence for a reason and not a distance, and that's because of the next property we're going to talk about, which is its asymmetry.
so to consider that, uh, I'm going to make a, a plot which looks at binary variables again. Um, and, and this is sort of the binary example we looked at uh, before. So consider um, Z taking values 0 or 1. And um, I'm going to imagine we've got two distributions, P, which is a binary distribution where uh, the value uh, the, the probability that z is equal to 1 is 0 0.8, and q is another binary distribution where the probability that um, z takes the value 1 is rho. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute the kl q to p here um, and see how that val varies as we vary rho. Okay, so this, this kl, let me just draw it over here actually, this kl q to p will just look like, we've already sort of computed this to start with, it's rho log rho over 0 0.8 um, plus uh, one minus rho log one minus rho over 0, uh, one minus 0 0.8, which is 0 0.2. Okay, so um, this is the function that we're sketching over here. And if you stare at that function, you see it's doing all the things we said it we should do. It's generally greater than zero. Zero is the bottom here. When rho is equal to 0 0.8, then this function uh, is minimized and at the minimum, the value of the KL is exactly zero. Okay, so this is doing all the, all the properties hold for this particular case as indeed they should do. Okay, so that was KLQ to P. Let's go and evaluate uh, now what KL P to Q is. And if you remember, this thing looked slightly different form. It looked like 0 0.8 log 0 0.8 over rho plus 0 0.2 log 0 0.2 over one minus uh, uh, rho here. This was the alternative form that we sketched out to start with. And here I've plotted that okay, on, the, on the right hand side here. And you can see that these two um, things do not look the same. Um, so, uh, you know, the properties we looked at before still hold. So there's a quality when the two distributions are equal, when rho is equal to q, it's always positive, it's zero when the two things are identical, other, otherwise um, it's positive. But you can see there's quite different behavior in this curve, in particular when we get to rho is equal to zero or one, the KL divergence actually wings up and, and tends to infinity, which did not happen over here. Okay, so this is like a proof by a single counter example, if you like, that um, the KL divergence in general is not symmetric. And this is a reason why in combination with the previous properties it's called a divergence and it's not a distance measure. Um, so this is going to be central, a central object for us for the EM algorithm and variational methods that we'll look at in just a second. As I said, it also turns up in an in information theory. In information theory, the KL divergence between P and Q is the extra cost you'll pay in bits uh, in terms of your message length, average message length for encoding distribution P using distribution Q. So if your code uses distribution Q and the true distribution over symbols is P, you'll pay KL P to Q extra bits. Um, so that was one of uh, Shannon's theorems, um, uh, the sort of the foundation of information theory. Um, there are various other parts of machine learning where this uh, object turns up. So one of the reasons we're teaching it is because um, it's sort of a fundamental importance beyond the applications we'll look at in this course.